Welcome to this video on uh, using loops, for loop, in this particular case, uh, to perform an analysis of variance on multiple columns in one file. Uh, first thing is uh, I want to uh, set our working directory. Uh, what I have done is I've gone to File uh, with the console window activated. You go to File and Change Directory and you get your browser. Uh, <coughs> I'm just I'm at this point of uh, selecting my folder and uh, setting it. So uh, from there, uh, I can open a script so it automatically goes there because I set my directory to there. Okay. So uh, I've got these at larger font sizes so you can see them. <clears throat> so we'll be clicking back and forth a little bit. Um, what you will, and in some cases scrolling like that, sorry. Uh, what you'll notice is that first I have this line here. So there's some explanation up here. Whenever you see the uh, hashtag, it's, uh, it means it's not code. So all of this is my code down here. So I can right click on what I've selected and uh, click run. And it shows me the <coughs> excuse me, the working directory. Um, when you select a line over here, you can also uh, click on this icon up in the top left, working in this uh, R GUI. Uh, and I opened the 32-bit on my 64-bit machine. Hopefully that doesn't slow things down. But anyway, uh, the uh, other way of setting the working directory uh, is to use the set WD and you would have to have this um, uh, information here to put into the uh, parentheses. So basically, you'd go to your folder, find your folder, and then get that information. I have it right here, so I'm going to copy it. So when you would use your uh, folder browser in... <coughs> Uh, in Windows, if you push down here, uh, click there, and then you hit Control C on your desktop, then uh, you can get that as well. So I should be able to paste it right in here and it'll be the same thing. Okay, so there's two ways of setting your working directory. <clears throat> oh, notice what happened when I copied and pasted in there. It went to the backslash rather than the forward slash. So you have to change all, if you use that second approach, I don't know why, you have to change all these uh, to forward slashes. You see the problem that it has here. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> let, let's proceed. So uh, from that, then, uh, we can open a, a file. There's just a note here on, on what to open. So we're going to name it AD once it is read in. It's a .csv, and we're going to choose the file, and that uh, there is a header in the file, so the header equals true. So I'll click this one this time. So it's going to take me right to that directory. And I have two files that I'm going to run this on, uh, hopefully fit it into the same recording. Uh, one is on the metabolites for a study, a, a biosimulation study that we had performed uh, of metabolic pathways uh, in Alzheimer's disease. And the second are the reaction fluxes uh, in that pathway. So I'll do the metabolites first. So now we have a table AD. We need to activate the library car. Okay. And once that's activated, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, have it uh, indicate the number of columns in that file that we just took in. Right. So it has counted them essentially. Now I'm going to create a, a table in R called AVZ. Uh, where we're going to repeat uh, adding an NA in each uh, case, the number of columns in AD. Right? So we just need to create this uh, file first before we start running our loop to add things to it. So that's what's going on. Okay, so we now have a, tile, a file AVZ. If I come over here and I type uh, AVZ, you see there's my... Uh, 
this one has uh, 476, 77, 78, 478 uh, columns, and right now they're just called NA, but those will be filled in when we uh, run this uh, as we proceed. So the other function I'm using uh, is to capture what will come to the console from here on out uh, in between this sink here where I start it and down here where I uh, end the sink and then it will return. So once this sink is started, uh, you won't see any of this information going to the console. Once it's done, then we'll start this and you'll see this going to the console until we have this second sink down here. So whatever will would have uh, you see these print commands within the for loop, whatever would have been printed to the screen in the console over here will uh, end up going into this file. Okay, and the reason for using this approach uh, is that we have this for loop for i uh, an index uh, within um, this uh, file that we read in. I want to start on the second column and then proceed for the number of columns in AD. We've already counted those and it, it, can, it counts them from this anyway. Um, and so this is the, uh, the precondition here with our index. And then we're uh, going to have our, uh, our conditions and then uh, the updates. So uh, the curly bracket, as it's shown here, these parentheses are called curve brackets. These are uh, curly brackets and these are straight brackets uh, in this terminology. Uh, this opens our loop and then you see all the way down here the final one that closes our loop. So everything within here is going to loop uh, under these um, uh, conditions and there be the updates. So uh, it'll loop through each of these separately. Um, <clears throat> Here I'm getting the column names, so that would have come to the screen one at a time, right? I starting with column two, and then when it goes through the loop, it'll come back and then go to column three, and all the way through the hundreds of columns that we have in here. Same thing with the second um, uh, condition is uh, the uh, summary of the analysis of variance on the AD table. Uh, with our, our columns. Um, these would be the dependent variable columns. And uh, the analysis of variance is based upon the groups that we find in our treatment group. And in this case, we have a, a control, an incipient, a moderate, and a severe condition or stage of Alzheimer's disease. And it's getting the data from the AD table. Uh, after that, so it'll do uh, it'll go through this table once and get the column name, put that to the screen, but we won't see it. Uh, and then it will go and make the summary ANOVA table. And then uh, on the on this ANOVA in here, it's going to calculate the Tukey's post hoc test to compare uh, each of our groups, the four groups. The, you, and you'll see the comparisons when we're done. Right? So those would scroll to the screen one at a time and then fill the screen and then we'll uh, print uh, the column and then print uh, the AVZ, excuse me, this is where it would be printing to the screen, and then we we'll print this, so it prints one at a time, these are the, uh, the updates, and of course the sink is still open and uh, it'll keep looping until it completes all the columns in the AD, the original file that I brought in, uh, and then it'll stop the sync. So let me run that. Uh, the library car. Let's see, how far did I go on this? So I'll just run it all again. So I'm going to go all the way down until I close the sync. Okay. So you see the wheel spinning on the left there. And so it's working on it, working on it. It's a lot of calculations. It's faster when I use the 64-bit. <laughs> okay, so it's done now. So now what we want to uh, begin is uh, the same thing, but in this uh, time uh, we're going to create another file, uh, Inova p values doc, and um, 
we're starting a loop but in this one we're going to do the columns so I always get the column name so we know what uh, metabolite or, or marker uh, there is uh, if we ran it without this you wouldn't see which you wouldn't know which marker went with which results or which results went with which marker and so what we're doing in this one is we're doing a summary of the AOV uh, analysis of variance but we're only going to print out the probability uh, greater than F value uh, and uh, the column uh, and the AVZ will print and go into the sink. So let's do this one. Okay, so it's working again. So that one's a little bit faster because I didn't have to do quite as much. So um, I can now go to the uh, directory And we see we have uh, two new files. So this is the ANOVA two keys. It's a text file. Right? So printing the column gave us this. Printing the summary of the ANOVA table gave us this. And then this is the uh, two keys post hoc test. And we got it for each of the uh, 478 all the way down to Z. Right? So we have that whole table. And right now what I'm going to do is just uh, save that as a Word document. Uh, this is, uh, in the current version of this, this is necessary because if we run it again with another data set, it's going to replace the, uh, the text document. And then the other that we have is um, just the uh, p-value with each of the markers. And what we need to do is to change this so that this becomes a separate column over here so all the words get compressed and all the numbers get compressed into a column on the right. Then we've got to get rid of this and this uh, thing here. So those are our next steps. Okay, so let's get back to our code and I'll scroll down. So now what it's going to do is we're going to uh, select it's going to prompt us and we're going to select the ANOVA P values document. So we're going to bring that back in. Try to do this automatically, but it was giving me some problems. So the ANOVA P values here. Okay, so we now have that. And what this is going to do is uh, this is a code I found. I'm not showing my sources here, but uh, I wanted to keep this simplified. It's going to rearrange the tables. Right from uh, one to uh, you know set up two rows um, by two, and then um, it's going to put the markers in the first column on the left, and then the or actually we're, we're separating, we're making two separate ones, and then it comes together in the data frame here. Um, so we break it apart into two separate uh, tables, new tables here, if you will, and then um, we put them back together with our columns labeled and then we're writing it out to a new file okay so now if I go look for p-value table CSV that's there so it did this right so now let's look at our code I should have information here so we now need to open that and replace the NA's so I select, this is all just one column here, I need to get rid of the NAs, so find, replace. I tried to get R to do this, but it wouldn't do it easily for me, and I know easily, it's simple to do it here in Excel. Uh, and now uh, select both of these columns, and i got to get rid of that uh, square bracket. And we're done. And I have in the instructions to save this as a table two wouldn't really matter. Still a CSV comma delimited. And we'll exit that. And now we'll complete. So now we're going to create a table three uh, to, um, to read that file. One we just made. And it's only P2 because I saved it by that, but that's the one we wanted. So that's now called table three. Now I'm going to make a table four, which is only going to pr put into there any P value less than 05. So we don't want all 475 P values. We just want those that are, see, this one isn't behaving itself. 
for some reason it's not uh, get catching that. So I've got to work out that problem. But once that's done, then um, with this command here, we would send it out to uh, another file. So let me see. Uh,